What's good with the YouTube of Convict's Perspective? It's your boy, Big Flacco. As always, smashing, dashing, sliding on through with what? Little Whole lot of energy. energy. Whole, Whole lot of energy. What's cracking, man? Oh, that's not we got, an we got an interesting article, man, Um, about a murder that happened in the, in the Metropolitan uh, facility down in Southern California, man. Um, Rose going to go into it. After that, we're going to do a Convict's Perspective, as always. All right, man. This is from uh what you call it the daily bulletin is the titles three pomona gang members accused of murdering an la inmate and it uh it is from october of last year so it's a couple months old man but it's a good article man a federal grand jury on thursday october 14th returned an indictment that charged three pomona area gang members who are also mexican mafia associates with murdering a fellow inmate at metropolitan detention center in los angeles the documents also detailed how prosecutors say the Mexican mafia leadership operates its vast enterprise of drug trafficking and violence inside and outside of prisons. The indictment alleges that Jose Valencia, Swifty Gonzalez, Carlos Papa Gonzalez, and Juan Squeak Sanchez, 28, acting at the direction of Mexican mafia member Michael Big Mike Lerma, killed the victim in his cell on June 28, 2020, for failing to pay off a drug debt. Wow. Lerma, also of <laughs> Pomona, was charged with murder. The victim was identified in the indictment only by the initials SB. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office website says that on June 29, 2020, 39-year-old Steve Benkham died in an unspecified jail from strangulation with a rope or cord and stab wounds. Hmm. This week's indictment supersedes... Hey, this isn't funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. It ha hey, this is what happens, though. Just pay attention. This week, indictment supersedes the one filed in 2018 that alleges those four inmates conspired to violate the RICO influence, the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization RICO Act related to the Mexican Mafia's control of Pomona and surrounding areas where Lerma controlled drug trafficking and extorted drug proceeds from Latino street gangs. He also seized control of the drug trafficking at the Metropolitan Detention Center, the indictment alleges. Members of Lerma's operation also committed violent crimes and drug trafficking, the indictment further states. If convicted of murder, the defendants would each face a statutory maximum sentence of life in federal prison or death if that sentence is sought, the U.S. Department of Justice said in a news release. The men were in federal custody awaiting a trial on the previous indictment that is scheduled for April 12th of 2022. Lerma is one of about 140 full members of the Mexican Mafia, also known as La M, which the indictment described as a gang of gangs. The Mexican Mafia mostly comprises senior members of Southern California gangs who bended together to profit off of crime. By exercising control over inmates in the prison and jail systems, primarily through violence and threat of violence, the Mexican Mafia is able to control the activities of Southern California Hispanic criminal street gangs, both inside and outside of custody facilities, the indictment states. Mexican Mafia members and associates wield such power over the prison and jail populations that they are able to order that acts of violence be carried out not only amongst other prison or jail inmates, but also against street gang members and others outside of prison or jail, the indictment continues. Members of the Mexican Mafia divide control of criminal activities into lockups and into communities. A member will control the smuggling of drugs into a particular jail and the collection of taxes, essentially extortion that allows the gang to continue to traffic drugs, the indictment says. Orders are shuttled in and out of prison by phone, prison system emails, smuggled notes and visitors. The Mexican Mafia member in control of a lockup or neighborhood will assemble a team of associates to carry out orders. Being loyal to the Mexican Mafia is, in, is a major part of being a Southern California Hispanic street gang member, and it is openly understood that when individuals join such gangs, they are joining the entity loyal to the Mexican Mafia, the indictment says. Very interesting. That's actually a pretty good article, man. Yeah. You know, every time we... Every time we read a news article when they talk about the MA or NF, there's always a, a lot of discrepancies, right? As far as their knowledge, their understanding of that man. And so far, this is pretty accurate, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we know how the MA functions. They have their senior members. They have their camaradas under them working out there, uh, doing their bidding out there in the streets. And this is the same thing that we've we said over and over again, man. 
if you align with, as a gang member, a, a Sureño, a Southerner, and you and you commit any type of crime that they're going to link on behalf of one of these organizations, whether you're a member or not, whether you're following orders or not, there's going to be repercussions and consequences. Whereas a regular murder, you may be looking at like, you know, 25 to life, maybe 30 years, and you got action to parole. But with these new uh, uh, federal laws, they're trying to wrap you up. I've ne I don't know how the federal system works, but I think once you have catch a murder, either you get time or you get life. There's no in between. There's no guaranteed parole. You don't go in front of the parole board, from my understanding. You know what I'm saying? So, um, this is just typical business in Southern California, brother. Yeah, man. Like, like we've talked about in many episodes, man. We got hundreds and hundreds of episodes, you know, thousands of hours of lives, man. And we always tell you, it doesn't matter where you're from. All these groups, at the end of the day, they're about one thing, and that's the dollar. You know what I mean? The dollar and power. You know what I'm saying? They, they go together. You know what I mean? If you're in any type of group that's associated, man, the, the guys down south, man, some of them are so deep, bro, that they don't even know any MA members. They don't know anybody affiliated like that. They've never been in jail. They have no idea. But at the same time, while they're out in their neighborhoods, they're out in their territory, their street, whatever, however it's divided up down there and they're hustling, man, there's a chance that if they get busted, they could end up in a federal indictment just because of the historical association between them neighborhoods down there and the big homies down there. And that's the same for up north. That's the same for the, the, the white boy gangs. You know what I mean? If they link them back to this and this and this and this, that's how they're going to do it. It's more prevalent between the north and the south, of course. That's historically how it's been. They come after them a little bit different. But it's the way they're set up. There's so many different street gangs from each one. Whereas, man, these white dudes and stuff, they wiggle through without that label as a gang member a lot of times. Even though they're do they're doing the same kind of activities as, as, as the southerners and northerners or, or some of the brothers. But, you know, that's the lesson of, in this whole thing, man, is whether you're obligated or not politically, you could be a nobody to them inside of the institution. They don't even know who you are. You're just a, a young Mexicano young Chicano walking the yard, bro. But you get caught up for something, they're going to label you almost the same as they are them big dudes, bro. And that's just what's going to happen. You know, from, from doing these articles, right, and um, talking to people that were affiliated with that particular organization, the thing that I find kind of interesting is this, bro, is that the MA, right, they don't have to necessarily have a member out there in the streets to be controlling things. They could be locked up. They're gonna they're gonna pull someone into that's either close to that area, either their wife's from that area, or they have some type of association. They could be locked up doing 25 to life. And it's okay for those soldados out there, their soldiers to go out there and do their bidding. So it's easier for them to get caught up. Every time I, I look at all their different indictments, man, and over and over again, you see less MA members being indicted, more associates, because those are the ones that are doing the bidding out there in the streets. You know. It, the difference between the NF and MA is a lot of times the NF, you're going to have carnalis that are involved. There's going to have to be a C out there in the streets that's take, taking taking control, you know, or someone that may be in another area. That puts them in a position that, you know, same thing with the North Daniels, right? But even more so that they can go after any type of indictment with anybody from down south because they link anything to the Southern California gangs, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I remember one time when uh you know I, I was running the east bay north bay etc and i had got locked up for a quick little violation man it was uh 45 days 60 days or something and uh my second in command at the time he was he was he was an nr member he, he hadn't made that step yet everybody knows who i'm talking about big mexican mike right well uh i knew i was getting locked up like three days before i actually did and what it was is i had uh violated a 5b which is a stipulation of parole where you can't drink PO came by my house. I played it off, but I had to test. And right away, they went back to the hey, office and knew I was drinking. Did you, did you get fined for that? No, nah, they didn't tell me nothing, bro. They oh, didn't okay. tell me shit. Uh, nowadays, I would. They'd be like, Yeah, nowadays, you're getting fined. $2,500. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, anyway, he caught me slipping. But the, the point of the story is um, 
Mike, when I when I told him I was getting locked up, he's like, hey, do you want me to go report to such and such? He's talking about some other season here. I'm like, no, absolutely not, bro. Absolutely not. You know, we are not to cross regiment lines. You're in control till I get back, bro. And you're more than qualified to do it. You don't even got to write me. You don't got to do none of that because me, me and him had that rapport where I knew everything would be facilitated correctly. But it's like the way the way that we used to do it was limiting liability. You know what I mean? Like how everybody's like, oh, I'm from San Ho, but I'm going to go do this in Salinas or I'm from here and here. Man, dude, that's that's not the way to do it. And you see that happen in all kinds of indictments, man, where people from five, six different little areas, bro, end up getting hit up because they're intermingling and it was never meant to be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, going to involve a, another group or nothing, it's just opportunity for when somebody folds because somebody is always going to fold, bro. That's just the way it is. They start arresting people. It might not even have nothing to do with any kind of group business, but they get busted just randomly pulled over at a running the stoplight, bro, and they got something on them, they could fold. Well, if you're not dealing with 500 people and you keep your security tight, he can only tell on a couple people. It's just limiting yeah. liability. And people just aren't adhering to that anymore for whatever reason. And that's why you're seeing these 100 people indictments, 70 people indictments. And like Flacco said, a lot of associates and outsiders on both sides have been brought into the fold. You know what I mean? I know yeah. Females have always been utilized to facilitate communications and money and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But man, now I hear of, of you know, people going to jail and their hyena is actually kind of in charge of the fucking neighborhood, bro. It's like I've heard that too, bro. That's that's different to me. Hey, who am I to judge? I don't care. You know, it's nothing for me, but it's just different. You know, times are changing. You be know, honest. I never, I never be honest, bro. But let's let's be honest, bro. We all know that's a big no no period. Yeah, I don't know so much about the homies from down the wayway, but uh, up, up, well, that, up north, they, up north, that's I mean, that's always been a no no, bro. Like, yeah. they could be used for communications, they could be used for you know, what I mean, Smuggling putting money in the bank, yeah. putting money in the banks and stuff like that, right? <laughs> Communicating and forwarding letters, and you know, some of them will forward messages and stuff, you know, what I mean, but you know, they were never supposed to be deeply involved to where they're you know. They don't hold no authority or rank or association is what I'm getting at. There's nothing that I've ever seen with any of, any of the bylaw structures that says you can consider a woman an NF associate. Zero. I've never seen that anywhere. You know what I mean? And now some, some you know, nowadays, you know, with everybody going to the feds and the communication lines being different places and stuff like that, they've opened the doors to where they're more deeply involved. And with that... If you get into any type of situation where you have five or ten women in the workplace, there's going to be fucking issues with, with those women. It's just in their DNA. So can you imagine that you're putting five or ten females involved in your business? You don't think there's not going to be no drama? You don't think there's not going to be no stirred up shit? Sure. You don't think there's going to be some females that think they have more authority or juice? That's just the reality of it, bro. That's just the goddamn truth. I'm going to tell you what will happen, too. I can see it before it even plays out, man. You're going to have five or six females that associate with five or six different members inside of jail. And what's going to happen is the females are going to form their own hierarchy based on who their contact is. Oh, my contact's higher than yours. Oh, I know more than you. Bro, a couple years back, man, three, four years ago, man, I talked to this female. I had no idea it was a female. You know what I mean? How did you not know it was a female? <laughs> It was a ra it was a random email asking me oh. some stuff, right? And uh, I figured it was a dude, bro. I figured it was a, a, a NF member, bro. Turned out one hundred percent it was a female. This is back five six man, probably about five six years ago, bro. This female, bro, knew more than a lot of NF members I have met. More sharp, more intelligent, could reference the Constitution, was familiar with the whole COC everything bro it was mind-boggling to me bro i was just like wow it's like stuff you can learn if you really if you spend a few hours a day for a few months researching on the internet you know you can find the constitution etc but just the the psych the, the mind frame of this chick was unbelievable bro the things that she had been exposed to and educated on you know and when i finally confirmed it was a female for real via uh like a, a you know a video call yeah 
I thought I was being, I thought somebody was playing with me the whole time. I thought it was like, and it turned out to be one of the homies or something just fucking with me. Nah, bro. Yeah. It, it was insane to me. Cause never back, like I used, like I, like I've said before, you know, when, when, the way I used to hustle was I would incorporate people who had nothing to do with anything. White people, Asians, they had no idea. They knew I was a homie and shit, but that's, that was the extent of it. They didn't know nothing no about extent. no organization. They didn't know why I was hustling the way I was hustling. They can't tell nothing if they get popped. Nothing. Somebody brought me some stuff. I think Curtis told them to bring it to me. That's about all they could say. You know what I'm saying? And now they just know word for word. It's like, bro, how you know the how you know the Constitution better than Dancing Bear in them? You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you a question. What struck you out most in this article you read? Um, nothing, nothing really, bro. It's pretty commonplace, man. Uh, the fact that they're going for the federal death penalty, possibly over an in-jail murder, that seems kind of interesting, man. But, you know, this is this is what we've been digging on ever since, uh, you know, when we dropped Quiet Storm before any news agency had it. When we dropped that, they're not playing, bro. The feds are not playing. You know, if if I am a, a cousin of a, a northerner only that's functioning on the streets and I do something, they're going to go after me with the full arm of the law. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah. well, you only did this and you're not a member. No, nah, they're going to they're going to nail you. They're going to nail you, bro. Nail you. And that goes for the females, too, bro. They're not playing. They know females with kids are their, their, their weakest link. A female yeah. with kids because she has a responsibility to her kids and you know people be mad all oh, that girl snitched or whatever it's human nature bro to take care of your kids is it right is it wrong that's not for me to determine but um that's the weakest link man and the more you let these females know especially mothers mothers of children that are can't take care of themselves that's that's a very 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 little flimsy little thing bro i mean yeah you know, can you even really blame them, bro? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not a full member. You guys got me doing this. And some of them might just be doing the stuff just based on family relations or friendships, not even knowing the full extent. Don't get me wrong. Some of them do. Some of them are about that business, bro. Yeah, you know, our, definitely. The, the Peggy's and the, and, you know, numerous females we can name. There's no reason to name you ever heard about? You ever heard about that broad, the Black Widow? It sounds familiar. Out of, out of like Tudor County. Tell me the story they a, real quick. They had to put a hold on her because she had a couple people killed out there based <laughs> upon her actions. You know what I mean? No, seriously, that's why they called her the Black Widow. You know what I mean? She was out there wiggling. You know what I mean? Fuck with this dude, fuck with that dude, and they were out there killing each other. That's a true story, bro. They called her the Black Widow. Hey, those females will get you caught up too, man. I've heard situations where females are writing, you know, different members different associates and members whatever the case might be man that could end your career real quick man you 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 get the wrong person involved with you or whatnot you exchange some maybe slightly inappropriate comments that could end a 20-year career or text messages yeah yeah, yeah man it happens bro hey you, could, you could not break a phone you're supposed to break and next thing you know oh, but that, 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 break that, you know that could be also a weakness too, right? I mean, I mean, if it's your wife, it's a whole different story, man. Like any any Carnal's wife, you gotta back up to the fullest, man. No matter what. But there's been in the past where people start to fuck with a bitch. This is, I mean, excuse my language, fuck with a female. This is their female that they're messing with. And they put their stamp on that and they get offended when she goes out there and we'll go and does what she does. Makes you know a homeboy's caught up. But this is just who the female was the whole damn time. Well, a lot of dudes too will 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 be talking to a girl like like in a platonic friendship, flirty kind of way, and you know, being in jail, you know, you're trying to dig your claws into that. Man, the broad doesn't even realize how serious you are, and as anybody else might not realize how serious that you think it is in your mind. That's why, bro. I've never like like say you got the finest chick in the world, bro, and you're not talking. Both of y'all said y'all are done. In my opinion, that female is off limits for life, regardless of how fine she is, because you never know, bro. People higher than you, if they get their feelings hurt, they have more pull than you, more juice than you. Oh, the the the, the consequences could be 
They could be you know catastrophic. I mean? Seriously. Okay. Like in your situation, bro, the consequences for that individual should have been catastrophic. You know what I mean? And it's just a flip of a coin. Who knows who, who makes more money, who's on, you know what I mean? It's a popularity contest. And we go back to that, but man, females, drugs, money, those things are very, very powerful things, bro. Yeah. And they'll end your career. And they're the same things that'll get you caught up on the street, drugs and money, even if you're not a member, man. So today's lesson is no matter who you are, man, once you're affiliated with any kind of group, it could turn into way more than you might not have no status in that group, but the feds don't care. The Department of Justice in California, the, the district attorney, they don't care. And trust to, me, to them, you whoever, might as well be an MA or an NF member when they hit you with these charges. And trust me, whoever you're working for, you're expendable to, expendable to them. They don't because care, as unless you you're their family as, or something. As, as soon as you get caught up, there's always going to be those that are out there ready to replace you. It's just That's just the nature of the business, man. That's the true reality right there. Hey, you, you're in first place on the bike. Motherfuckers want to be in first place. Everybody wants to be in first place. You know, being a being a member of a group, man, it, it's a it's a striving thing. You want to be the shot caller. You want to be the OG. You want to be whatever, OGB. You want to be the, the jefe, the mesa. You want to be that mm -hmm. if you're really striving. You know, there's a lot of people that get complacent and they're just happy being the guy that has to you know, the keister bunny, oh, I'll just keister, keister bunny. Everything. You know what I mean? Like, they don't ever want to, those are kind of the smart ones, but at the same time, you know, they're smart as far as the, the, the gang hierarchy goes. The feds don't care if they're just the keister bunny, brother. Yeah. Oh, you keistered sensitive information? You're participating in an ongoing criminal organization, brother. I mean, it's not only that, you can get, it, you can get, get indicted now for doing a removal. If they based upon that, that that was ordered by an organizational member, they all any are. type of proof, and we already know that's where they're coming from. Any type of action, man, they can wrap you up, bro. Yeah. Anyway, just wanted to bring you guys up. We haven't talked about Pomona. Shout out to Pomona, old hood, respected. And Tarzan, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, that, that hood's old, bro. It's got North and South history. For yeah, they, they, there's been, there's been some man F and M coming out of that hood, man. Okay, let's not say North and South. We'll say N F and M, like Flacco just said. But uh, shout out to Pomona. And hey, you guys, be careful with what you do. Think about it. Always, man, when you're out there committing crimes, imagine the worst case scenario that can happen to you. I know a lot of people think if I get caught with this gun at 16, 2, and 3, bro, it could be way. <laughs> no, enhances, bro. You, could, you, you could get out when you're 70 years old behind a pistol if they want to play them cards. Even a trigger lock, bro. People forget about that. Yeah. So anyway, be careful. Hey, if you want to gangbang, do your research, bro, because there's a lot of a lot of stuff you probably ain't thought about, man, mm -hmm. that we have because we've been there and done that. Your boy Rojo, Big Flacco. Big Flacco. Uh, Rojo will get at you guys in a few hours on the live, man. We'll make it happen. I hope February is better than January. January is a rough month for everybody man. I know. So everybody, who, let's say, hey, I survived January, hashtag. You know what I mean? It's been a rough one, man. I'm, I haven't survived it yet, bro. I'm <laughs> still trying to hey, figure yeah, it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a rough one, man. Hopefully, YouTube, all y'all are doing good, man. We're going to drop this immediately. Yep. Have a good day. Push that line. Much love I'm and out. respect, y'all.